Good day, Minecraftians. Purple Mentad here, bringing you episode 3 of my Season 2 Agrarian Skies Let's Play. Between episodes, I did a whole bunch of grinding, made myself a bunch more gravel, and gathered up a ton of cobblestone, sifted a bunch of gravel and sand and dust, got materials, created myself some fishnets. There's a pearl oyster? What? That is not a pearl oyster. That is a fishnet. The fish nets will occasionally create fish for me. In this case, I got a male cod, which I actually want and prefer raw, so that I can turn it into foods. Because you can take your mariculture fish, and I believe you should be able to cook them somehow. Maybe. Can you even go in a furnace? I can eat you. That's good. That's something. But if I try to put you in the top of a furnace, yes, you can, but what do you turn into? I am not extraordinarily experienced with the mariculture. Yeah, you can't cook these in a furnace. That's a shame. In any case, the fun and exciting part of doing all that was that I did it on a Twitch TV stream, and I think that grindy bits, I'm going to keep doing there because it was a lot of fun. I had a good time hanging out with people, chatting with them, and a couple of interesting folks stopped in. Uh, Dusk, well, Lord Dusk, Actually, here. Hang on. He's in here somewhere. Uh, maybe. I'm terrible at this. In any case. Oh, yeah. There we go. The Great Mage Trio, Dusk. So, Dusk stopped in. Pokefen, Fothiel, a couple of others. More than I could imagine to possibly name. And kept me company while I got myself a bunch of saplings, a bunch of dirt, and did a bunch of menial labor tasks so that I would be ready to dive straight into the quests for today. So, let's get started. I caught some fish. I'm not going to show that on camera because I hate fishing. But I will show collecting my rewards for collecting that one fish. I get a reed fishing rod, a cooked fish, a quarter of a heart, and we'll take the third reward bag. That cooked fish is a snack which grants one full hunger bar and half of a bar worth of saturation, and can be used to make fish lettuce wraps, which are pretty cool, fish tacos, a lot of really good stuff. We'll hang on to it for now until I can turn it into something even bigger and better. Quarter heart is not enough to make into anything. Basic reward bag is probably going to cause a mess. Oh, no, I got a quote-unquote full heart, but it is in fact a rotten heart, which we will hang on to for now. Because later on, I can turn that rotten heart into a proper full heart with 500 LP and at least a tier 3 blood orb. And as fans of the series will know, I'm quite good with the blood magics. Alright. Silkworms. The reason to eat these, only half a hunger bar, but a full saturation bar. So they last quite a while. If you don't need to fill up a bunch of hunger bar, you're best off using silkworms. Now, first things first. I'm going to grab some materials out of my metals chest, and I'm going to want... Uh, I believe it's... hang on. I need aluminum brass to continue on. As you can see, I got myself a bunch of redstone, some emeralds and diamonds. All of this stuff is going to be very, very useful. The aluminum brass is created by alloying together five molten aluminum and... Hmm, no. That is three molten aluminum per molten copper. Okay, so we're going to grab our copper and our aluminum because we are going to need to make some molten bra aluminum brass. And I already have some of it in there. I have 16 ingots of molten aluminum brass, which is honestly probably as much as I need. I don't know why I have blood in there. Something must have spawned in there. In any case, if I toss in another aluminum ore dust, you will see that once it melts, which I have plenty of the lava in there for it to do so, it will alloy with the molten copper and become molten aluminum brass. While that's doing that, I am actually going to install another drain on my smeltery. Because I have long-term plans. Oh, that broke my pickaxe. Good! I was waiting for that to happen. Put the drain there, and I'm going to stuff the casting basin underneath it. Casting basin is used to make metal blocks. For example, if I were to put that molten copper on the bottom and pour it out, I will get nine blocks in the casting base, well, nine ingots, worth of molten copper will pour into the casting basin and create a block of copper. 
Just need to wait for the molten metal to cool, and then I can collect my resources. Fantastic. Now, the reason I wanted the molten aluminum brass, if you toss an ingot down there, you don't have to use an ingot. You can also use a seared brick just as easily as anything else. I want the molten aluminum brass on the bottom now, so I just left click that. Uh, I kind of want rid of that blood, but that's actually more difficult to do than, it, uh, than you'd think. You know what? We're going to put the blood on the bottom. Clicking that's kind of difficult. I can't pour it into there. That's okay. We we will do something with the blood later on. We'll pour the molten aluminum brass around that seared brick, and from that I get the ingot cast, which will then allow me to cast single ingots at a time. For example, those two iron that are sitting in there, I can get myself those out pretty easily. One and two. Fantastic. And now because I had one iron lying around from killing a zombie early on, I can now craft all that together to make an iron bucket. Fantastic. Hang on, let me combine all this together. There. And now we can stack it all together. Two full hearts, two rotten hearts. Awesome. So now I can move lava from the crucible into the seared tank without destroying my bucket. Happy day. All right. So, raw fish was complete. Mary had a butcher shop. Need 10 rotten flesh and 10 bones. I'm not gonna set up a mob spawner just yet. The fungus among us requires me to collect soul sand and, and an ender pearl. Now, we're gonna stick with the plan. So, casting call. I needed an ingot cast and a pickaxe pick head cast. So, to make the pickaxe head cast, all I need to do... Well, first I'm going to need a pickaxe head pattern, aren't I? And, if you remember correctly, stencils... Well, yes, there we go. Stencils, or blank patterns, can be made like that. And then used on the stencil table to create the pickaxe head pattern. Which, with a bit of stone will get me a stone pickaxe head, which can only be used to make casts. But since that's the goal at the moment, that's perfect for my purposes. All right, molten aluminum brass in the bottom. Pour myself a pickaxe head cast. And that'll be a quest complete. I am actually going to make myself another chest, hang out out here and be the home of all of my casts and other smeltery related nonsense. There we go. Boom, boom. Let's collect our rewards. We get a boat, a quarter of a heart, a full guard cast, and my choice of a single-use safari net, a liquid slime bucket, or a reward bag. So, you remember how I told you the slimy sapling was not necessary? That's because I knew I could get this liquid slime bucket. That single-use safari net, though, is really tempting. The liquid slime bucket even isn't necessary. It just makes life a lot easier. It's just, it's kind of mesmerizing in the way that the image keeps changing. Who knows what you would get? Now, nah, I'll take the liquid slime bucket because I know that it'll be very useful later on. That was a boat with Feather Falling 5. That will be useful later on as well. Which you wouldn't expect, but actually, it's kind of neat how you can use it. And this full guard, uh, I mean this pickaxe, no longer being useful, off the side. Away with you. Alright, let me get this copper ore dust back in here, because I don't need you at the moment. Moving on. Now, it's automatic. I need to make an aqueous accumulator, a vacuum hopper, and an autonomous activator. Ooh, vacuum hopper is going to be a little more challenging than I thought. I wasn't expecting to need ender pearls quite this soon. Moving Molten Metals, Pneumatic Servo, and a f Opaque Fluid Duct. That's a pretty simple prospect. We can use the bits that we already have. However, I'm actually not happy going for that quite yet, because I want to start working towards better ore processing than the smeltery. While getting double uh, for my effort is pretty good, I can do even better. Kind of sad that I bur uh, melted down all that copper at this point. And to do even better, oh, whoops, I actually need over here, 
what I'm going to do is I'm going to be taking my seared brick and I'm going to be melting that in the smeltery because every seared brick turns into one full bucket, 144 millibuckets of seared stone. And I can use that seared stone to create scorched brick from Tinker Steelworks. That's right. We're working towards a high oven because I want to get three uh, ingots out of every piece of ore that I create. If only because I have to do a lot of work to actually create that ore. So I'm going to get the maximum reward from it that I can. Oh, that's wrong. Hang on. Where is aluminum? Everything's kind of sorted, sorta. Oh, I'm lying. I have no idea. I, I had it all nice and neatly sorted on the stream. And then I moved to the thing that I was using to sort it, and it's all a mess now. In any case, the reason you want to, uh, I want to use the seared bricks for it is because they are the most lava efficient process. I could burn any random stone item and get a little bit. I could burn seared stone itself, but it takes four of the bricks to make one seared stone. I could burn um, cobblestone directly, but that gets me an eight millibuckets per cobblestone. The grout is only a third, I mean a quarter, 36 millibuckets of seared stone. So if you really want to get as much seared stone as possible, as fast as possible, make it with the seared brick. And step one of using this stuff is to take that materials in you book, which doesn't tell you very much useful because it just gives you the basic recipes and a bunch of information on things that we can already look up in NEI. Barricade, grout, books. Yeah, not necessary. You put it in there and you pour some seared stone over top of it. Just a little bit. And it turns into steel working in you, which also finishes the first quest in steel powered flight. I'll get 16 scorched bricks, a quarter of a heart, a reward bag, and my choice of either 16 graveyard so soil or 16 yellorium dust. Yellorium is fairly easy to produce later on. So let's look at the graveyard soil. Oh, that just takes some bone meal and some rotten flesh. Both of these are materials that I will have in abundance if I so choose. Neither of them is super um, rare or hard to get my hands on. So I'll take the Eulorium because I'm probably going to build a big reactor at some point. I might not, though. There is someone that challenged me to do the entire series without building a big reactor. You guys let me know. What do you think? Should I go for the zero reactor playthrough? One good reward bag. Gets me a red herring. Awesome. Thank you, Jaded, for confirming my faith in your care, love and caring of your players. This is basically a cooked fish with a different name. It, it has been renamed in an anvil and it is a cooked fish. Yeah. Moving on, uh, what else? Uh, that opens up the High Oven Hijinx quest. High Oven Hijinx requires you to craft just one of most of the High Oven pieces. To make more of the High Oven blocks, you need to put bricks, well, I mean, to make more specifically of these scorched bricks, which are used to make all of the High Oven blocks, you need to put your bricks into the liquid casting table and pour some a little tiny bit of seared stone on top of each of them. So I am actually going to cut the camera and work my way through a bunch of these. And once I have myself a collection of scorched bricks, I shall return. Alrighty folks, I produced three and a quarter. Well, actually no, just three stacks. I was given the quarter stack of scorched bricks. Let's craft the items that we need real quick to finish the quest, which is the controller, the drain. What else do I need? If I could, you know, remember these things without needing to double check, that would be so much better. So much better. Like, infinitely better. But it's not. The duct. And the... not you. Oh. Bricks. Just bricks. Um, I believe you can make these bricks by also putting an actual 
block of bricks with 32, but it ends up being the same, just less, you know, clicking. Might have been good. In any case, quest complete, claiming 16 scorched bricks, and a quarter of a heart reward bag, and four more scorched bricks. Once again, graveyard soil, I can craft lots of that once I get a... Ooh, rain muffler. Yay, that's useful. No, it's not. <laughs> uh, once I get my mob farm set up, I can make lots and lots of the... Oh, what was it called again? The silly thing. The graveyard soil, without needing to, you know, waste a quest reward on it. Alright, next step. It wants me to make an autonomous activator, I believe. We're going to deposit that liquid slime bucket. Combine our heart, get rid of it. You, hide in there for now. Um, so I could make steel armor, kind of useful, uh, but I'm not crafting steel yet. I could craft the deep tank stuff, or I could make myself the steam turbine and turbine housing. I am so not ready for any of that yet. But I've got a little bit of steel power to fight complete. Uh, Hell's Kitchen is one that is a good early uh, start, but I don't have any more clay, and I don't feel like grinding up clay at the moment. So we're going to do the moving molten metals. I need fluid ducts and pneumatic servo. That's pretty simple. Um, but to do that, I'm going to need some lead, some iron, some copper, all kinds of stuff. I already have copper in the smeltery, but I don't want to do any more from that smeltery. You know, I don't want to waste my materials like that. So instead, I'm going to cop chop down this tree, actually. That's going to move. I'm going to expand the platform between episodes. But we're going to get rid of this tree, and we're going to move stuff around a bit. And I'm going to build myself something that's going to help me get more materials faster. And that is the high oven. And I will be building it rather high, because I want to be able to process things quickly. Now... The high oven, this early on, is going to be a giant help with metals because getting three ingots for the work that I would normally get one out of a furnace, pretty cool. But even more importantly than that is the... Oh, you know what? I'm not going to be able to break down because my pickaxe is broken. You know what? We're going to fix that first. Uh, even more important than that is going to be the speed at which it can function. All right, so I need to make myself a stone barrel. One of those, which is a slab and six stone. Which means I'm going to need ten stone or so in total. Like that and that. Fantastic. So one stone barrel. And I'm going to need one, maybe two bits of redstone. If you plop down your stone barrel... You grab yourself a bucket full of lava, you put it in the stone barrel, and you add redstone, you get netherrack. And if you take that netherrack, and you cram it into the crafting table, uh, I mean the tool station with the pick of misfortune, you will repair the pick of misfortune to full. Now, I could keep doing that and spending one netherrack per go to repair this thing, but if I take a look at my, uh, mighty smith, no? No? Where's the book I need? Why do I have another quest book? Strangeness. Oh, that's right. There's one in, left in the... Just in case you lose it, there's one left in here for you. I don't have the proper book to show you exactly what I'm talking about. That's okay. Anyway, point being that I'm going to need... Oh, I'd have to use iron to do it. Anyway, I'm not going to waste iron on this. Not until after I have the high oven built. So... I guess I'm not actually going to be able to dig down the way I wanted to. So the high oven will have to just sit on the ground, but that's okay. Waste of everybody's time because I am a terrible person. Um, where were we? Building. I have a controller. The scorched drain, very important, and the scorched duck is going to be very important as well. Duct. There we go. Uh... Here, get this sorted my way. I need iron, I need lead. To build yourself a high oven, you're going to need to build a 3x3 three three structure, and it's going to need to be rather tall. I'm going to build mine 5 tall. Or, yes, yes I will, because I can do this. 
I have lots of scorched bricks. And that's, you know, for a reason. I'm planning on using Tinker Steelworks extensively. And this will be a temporary home for this. I will move it later. Mm, you know what? That particular block right there is going to ruin this entire operation. Yes, it will. That's okay. Put the controller there. And put the duct all the way on top. Those ducts are very useful later on for automation. Oh, good. Actually, it won't screw things up. Right now, though, we're going to set it all the way to the last option, which is the output. Now, to make the high oven function, we are going to want blocks of charcoal. And with a blast, that I do need to... Oh, harvest level copper. Um... Well, that's an issue, because <laughs> uh, the harvest level on this thing is only stone. Fine, I guess I will have to smelt something in the smeltery, because I am all out of... Yeah, I don't have any more iron in there, so we'll put one iron ore dust back in there. That's a shame. All because of my own clumsiness. Pour out some of that molten copper, and I'm going to need the pickaxe head. So what I'm doing here is I'm making myself an iron pickaxe head so that I can replace the netherrack pickaxe head on here and get something even better. And that pick of misfortune will be my long-term tool. Un until I find something better or make something better. Both are options. Hmm. Yeah. So normally... This is a, oh yeah, the high oven can burn and cook at one time one piece of ore for every interior level. So because this is five high, it can cook three at a time. And there we go. There's some molten iron. Use one ingot of it to make an iron pickaxe head. Take this over to our tool station. All you need to do is toss in the Pick of Misfortune and give it the Iron Pickaxe Head. And now you will see the stats here. It can Mining Level Stone and the durability of, of Effective Durability of 220, Mining Speed 4. It gets upgraded to Mining Level 10, Effective Durability of 421, Mining Speed 6. Fantastic. And now, being that it's 10 level, it can easily mine the Block of Charcoal which does not want to go into the scorched drain. However, the seared faucet and the seared, uh, the casting basin are going to come with me. And I'm going to make sure that I have three lead and three iron with me. Because this is actually like fairly wasteful as far as the charcoal goes. The last thing that you need for this is a stick and... Oh, ah, there we go. A stick and some cobble to make yourself a lever, which you need to place directly next to the high oven controller. When you turn it on, it fires up. Now, if I put my lead dust, lead ore dust into these three, it will basically, as soon as it gets to the proper temperature, which I don't know if I can show that, but you can watch the temperature bar raise as this increases. That block of charcoal will burn for a very, very long time, which is fantastic. It takes nine charcoal per block. Almost there. And as you can see, as soon as it does reach that temperature, all three of those will melt and become nine ingots of lead, which I can then pour into here. And with you set to output, nope, that ore did not work. I will occasionally get slag doing this. And there will be a faster and better and more automated way to actually finish the processing and all of this later on. So now that I have my copper and my lead, I can combine a bit of both of those to make the fluid ducts that I need, which will allow me to do away with the seared faucet. Remember that faster and better bit? Here's part of it. So I set up my seared faucet. Oh, you know what? I don't have a, uh, 
Seared faucet's actually not going to work for me yet because I don't have the proper wrench. And to make myself, actually, it's the crescent hammer. To make myself the crescent hammer. Ooh, where are you? Probably easier to search for crescent. There we go. I need iron and I need tin. Okay. Well, I'm making some iron now. And I know I have tin in here. So grab myself. You want to keep in multiples of three. Actually, all 15. Sure, why not? Show you how fast this can go. And why, I would, why I'm choosing to use this particular method. So I'm going to have to break this fluid duct with my pickaxe for now. Which takes a little while. But not a super, not a huge amount of time. Get that seared faucet back into place. While I'm waiting, I can grab some glass, which I prepared last time, and some redstone to work with that iron and make myself a pneumatic servo. Come on. Still getting up to temperature for that. So, if I look up the pneumatic servo, this requires one iron, one uh, two iron, one redstone, two glass. Which I can set everything except the iron up right now. And while I'm still waiting, I can also start grabbing some other useful things. For example, if I were to grab my pick of misfortune and do this. You'll note that the uh, liquids that are already in there stay, which is awesome. I believe, yeah, that'll work. That'll work just fine. There we are, nine ingots of molten iron. And I can work on the tin. If you shift click, it'll go into one of these here. These are gonna be used for alloy production later, specifically steel. Oh, there we go. Got a little bit of slag. Looks like it's actually going into that first bin instead of the duct. I don't know why the tin ore dust is going into there. That is very strange. It is not operating in the way that I am expecting. I will have to check into that off camera and get back to you. So you notice that one block of charcoal still burning. Still lots more left to it. All right, break you down into iron. There's my pneumatic servo, and there is a quest complete. Moving molten metals completed. One reward bag, one quarter of a heart. This is a basic bag, and I get 16 punji sticks. That will actually be more useful than you can imagine. I will be using them, if not next episode, in the one directly after. One more full heart, bringing me to three in my collection, which I'm going to save. For reasons. Some of you know them. I'm sure that uh, if you want to know the reason, you can check the comments below. All right. So here's why I wanted that crescent hammer. You've seen about how long it takes a block of metal to pour out through the seared faucet. Now, if I use that crescent hammer to set that to output mode, and I use my pneumatic servo to change you to redstone ignored, it will flow all the time, and you can watch the casting basin fill very rapidly. Now, when I have a number of high ovens going and a number of casting basins going, that will be even better. Fantastic. So yeah, there's my basic core processing. That one bit o that one block of charcoal is probably going to allow me to process every bit of ore that I currently have, which I'm pretty happy about. Turn it all into three ingots per ore. Now, what's next on the list? Well, I really want to get that autonomous activator going because that's the secret to initial automation. And to get that going, I need Invar. I also need a, an ender pearl, but let's work on what we can uh, manage in this episode, which is the invar. And to make invar, we need to combine iron and nickel. So if I look up invar, to make the molten invar in the alloy smeltery, it is two iron, one nickel for two invar. I mean, three invar. 
Now, I could, of course, throw the ore directly into the alloy smeltery. Uh, I mean, directly into the smeltery and cook it up there. Or, here we go, and my nickel. I could move it through the high oven controller, turn you off, and pump the molten metal by fluid duct all the way over to the smeltery and pump it into that drain. And that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to need to make myself a couple more fluid ducts to do it, but it's not like I'm not going to be using them throughout the series. They are one of my favorite things. So... Oh, you know what? I did the wrong ratio. That's okay. I only needed one more craft. Boom. Now, anything that I melt in the high oven will get dumped into the smeltery. I already have a bar of iron in there, but I'm going to melt quite a bit more. Anyway, so if I combine six iron with three nickel, the high oven will not form alloys inside of it. Neither will the deep tank where you can use from Tinker Steelworks to store different metals. However, once they are pumped by the fluid duct into the smeltery, they will happily alloy into Invar. And now I have an entire block of molten Invar waiting for me in there. To best manage that, I am going to want um, probably another drain and another casting basin. And I'm going to be making plenty of these as time progresses, so I'm not worried about using one right now. Set this up real quick. Make sure the invar is still on the bottom. There we go. And because everything is coming in threes out of the high oven, it actually makes the whole process a lot cleaner of creating these blocks. There we go. One full invar block. Now, if I want to make that autonomous activator, and I do, I'm going to need invar blocks. I'm going to need another pneumatic servo. I'm going to need some pistons, which can be created with either aluminum or iron. I like to use the aluminum because there is a lot of things that require iron and not nearly as many that require aluminum. However, early on, it might not be the best call to use up all of your aluminum on this because it is quite a bit more rare than iron. All right, use up that copper real quick. Give me a moment to get this all cleaned out and gather the rest of the materials, and I will be back. All right, I am back with most of what I need. Now, these pneumatic servos, you can also make from silver, bronze, invar, steel, and aluminum, or aluminium, depending on which side of the Atlantic you are on. I'm going to use up my invar on it because I get that, like, nickel has almost no other use at all. Oops. There we go. Make one pneumatic servo. Unfortunately, like, the one downside of the crafting station is you can't clear it out super easily. Alright, make myself one piston. Which means if I attempt to make anything else in there, it ends up all mucked up. Make myself one chest. And that's everything. I just need to grab the two emeralds and two diamonds. And what this is going to do for me is it's going to allow me to automate right-clicking. I am not going to need to stand there and do it myself anymore, which is phenomenal. There are a number of potential uses for this, but the biggest and best, in my opinion, is to be able to toss it on the sieve. Let me grab some carrots so that I don't die while I'm explaining this, because that would be embarrassing. Juice me, carrots. Actually, I'm going to want some of the gravel that I have mined up for this express purpose. So, I toss my autonomous activator down. I right-click it with the crescent wrench until the front of it is pointing at the sieve, which I can tell from the little stripies. I have it set to right-click, it is facing front, and I just give it gravel. It's not going to move very fast, but it's also going to move very, I don't need to be here paying attention to it. As long as I don't starve, I'm fine. I can just let it run while I'm off doing other things. 
and it will continuously generate more resources for me like a good little guy and I can even leave it for a while because things do take a good five minutes before they despawn so it's not like it's going to be an instant issue oh I have a lot more charcoal than I thought I did that's kind of awesome so now I have some resource production I can totally walk away, let that work, and make a mess all over the floor, and come back and clean it up later when I want to. I am happy with this. This is a good thing. And that is one of the many things that I needed for its automatic. Unfortunately, the vacuum hopper is going to require an ender pearl. It is the only way to make the vacuum hopper is to start with a regular hopper, add some obsidian, and an ender pearl. The obsidian, we can start creating right now. Well, more or less. More or less right now, that is. Not more or less creating. We can start creating it. I just need to make sure that I actually have enough resources processed, which I do not. To make the obsidian, we are going to need a device known as a uh, igneous extruder. And to make the igneous extruder, we need to use tin, pneumatic servo, piston, and machine frame which is made from iron and gold. So I'm going to process a bunch more stuff, get myself the igneous extruder created, as well as uh, have the materials I need for the other creation that will go along with the igneous extruder. Back in a little bit. So I just look, took a look at the time, and this episode has already run well over. However, I wasn't quite done with it yet. I wanted to show you one more thing before I go, and that is is as long as we are talking about initial steps in automation hmm I need more wood all right sorry peach tree but your bottom has to go slightly as long as we're talking about the initial steps in automation I need to take two chests one of them is going to be surrounded with a little bit of invar like so or not not invar Invar does not work for that. Right, aluminum and iron only for this one, isn't it? That's... Okay, no problem. We will cook the iron next. Where is the iron? There it is. Won't take long at all. So, if you don't want to cook things in this way, you also have the option of... For example, I'll show you uh, when I do the nickel, gold, and platinum. You can throw all three in there at the same time. Won't be a problem at all. It will it will sort itself out over time. It's better if you have multiple casting basins to work with. But you can reorder them in the same way. What the heck is going on here? Oh, okay. It was still pouring out the last of the silver. That's all that was happening. So, if I take one of these chests and put some iron around it, I'll get a hopper. And if I dig there and there, I put the hopper down here. Actually, I mean, that's all you really need to do. Because then, the hopper is going to pull out of the casting basin as soon as the casting basin is done cooling every single time. However, you can even take it one step further. Because if you grab that other chest and you set it down in front of the hopper, where the hopper, that little um, bit on the hopper that you can turn by right clicking it with a crescent hammer, that is the output. If I stick that there, the hopper is going to automatically output my blocks into this area. Isn't that fantastic? So there we have it. Initial automation, automation successful. And so, yeah, I could cook the gold, the lead, and the copper all at the same time. I'm not 100% certain that it would not end up clogging up the fluid duct, though. That's my major worry. So, now I have automated, well, semi-automated metal processing. I still have to collect everything that the sifter pops out by hand and put it in the box. And I still need to um, handle a, a little bit of at least manual feeding of the high oven. Next time, well, between this episode and next, I'm going to gather a bunch more cobblestone. And I'm going to get myself a little bit more room to work with. 
because while, you know, this little starting platform is fantastic and all, I'm basically out of room. Uh, I want more space. And next time, we'll be taking this um, ore processing system a little bit further. Doing more with it. It'll be good. Thank you very much for joining me. I hope you've enjoyed this episode. If you have, please let me know. If you haven't, let me know too. Maybe there's something I could do to make it better for you. And I will see you next time.